Hey there, team. That was quite a long loading there. I was getting a bit worried. Oh god, 51,000 frames. It is a long one. Uh, almost 52. Uh, we do have a good bit of... Yeah, a good bit of shuffling and moving. Let me just stay at one time speed for now and I might increase it later. But, as you can tell in the distance there, that is Kair Andros. And this is the new Kair Andros. Which of course means I will not be posting this until after the, uh, <laughs> uh, the new version is released. But... Um, that's okay, but it's just another one for the for the stockpile that we've got for after that. I'll have to see what I want to do when, when the new version releases, whether I do want to have a little while where I'm just sort of spamming out the videos, or or if I do just want to stick to the one video a week schedule. I think I'll probably spam them out. I think that'll be a bit of fun. But, uh, I mean, well, first things first, absolutely gorgeous Kieran Andros. Um, I will not... Well, we'll see. We'll see how it happens time-wise. I'll I'll go through people's armies and then I might uh, jump back and have like a proper look through the streets. But this really is. I adore maps like this where you do, you know, some city fighting is encouraged or not encouraged, but it's possible. It's of course never something a defender wants to get bogged down into because, you know. But you've got these little points where you are you can limit it to quite a few. Well, to to a, not too many choke points and you can hold back. Uh, a quickly storming uh, attacking force for, for at least a little while. But again, outside you've got much more damaged buildings, you know, these places exposed to a lot more uh, a lot more attacks than the, the people behind the walls. And of course the, the nice fearsome towers, or well, glorious towers we could say. Uh, this was another one, uh, well another game of the boys, uh, so we've rolled these, um, yeah, I believe we've all rolled these factions. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge, but I'm very glad to get Rude Hour. Of course, Rude Hour is a faction I, I like playing a lot, and I think I'm half decent with them. Got my Cold Fell Maidens, Rude Hour Marksmen, Herenidine Rangers, two? Or one? Yeah, maybe maybe two Herenidine Rangers, uh, yeah, because, of course, not um, body piercing anymore, just sort of exceptional archers, so damn good to grab some of them, it and more troll hunters, Frodrum jabs, again, as I've said before, I'm not a big axe thrower guy, you know, yeah, it's just to my fault sometimes, um, black wolds, then uh, rude hour clansmen with that armor upgrade, still incredibly fragile, I think that brings them up to like, what, three armor value or something like that, but it's, uh, it's something, and that combined with the heavy shield that they've got up front, they can take a bit of beating, you know, as long as it's coming ahead of them. Rude Hour Swords, Heranidine Pikes, double Heranidine Pikes, of course. Um, then over here, Berserkers and the what? Enslavers. <laughs> Suit. Uh, and I've got my General in with the Berserkers, just because that's where I like to put him. Uh, I think usually, you know, if you want to be be as good as you can be, probably pop him with the enslavers, but I like him with the berserkers. I think it sort of makes sense for his his noble presence to be there. Uh, then we've got Tweak as one of my first allies here playing as Dol Amroth. I believe this is another 4v4. Uh, it's either 4v4 or 4v3. We'll see when, they, when we get the defender's forces open to us. He's got his uh, Haven Knights of Atheland there. Uh, very brutal melee cav uh, for that charging. Dor, sorry, Dol Amroth Men at Arms, nice beefy armor upgrades for the boys, kind of across the board, which is good and it's something I'm going to need to be fighting alongside uh, because I'm very, very fragile. But yeah, it doesn't, um, I mean, we can't see everything, of course, because it's all sort of stuck in, well, tucked in there. We did see the Haven Guard, of course. Uh, I saw that, uh, saw them pop up, but it doesn't, it seems like a pretty, pretty bog standard force, kind of what you'd expect. Not uh, a silly amount of cav, luckily. Um, and yeah, really just, just going for that, uh, that sturdy armor to make up for, yeah, again, where I'm lacking. Over on the other side, we have, um, our first, oh, no, Numenor. Uh, we've got Numenor, and yeah, we do have Misty. I thought it was Misty here, that's what was confusing me. We've got Red Knight playing as Numenor, so he's got his Belagar Footman, uh, three units off them, all pretty bog standard. Yeah, not, uh, not any major armor upgrades for the boys, but still pretty sturdy. Numenorean Shield Guard, three of them, lots and lots of cohort then to their side. And behind all that, we've got the Seafarers of Nendamos, Belagar Archers, Steel Bowmen, and the Sentinels. Uh, where do we have the General today? I didn't quite see that. Oh, tucked in over here, we've got the Fires and Swordmasters and the Royal Legion of Armenolos. And the, the General is, of course, in with the Fires and Swordmasters. 
So certainly something that is going to be exceptionally difficult for the defenders to bring down when we do sort of get them thrown into melee. And lastly, just to fill out our numbers, really, really beef us up and, and coming alongside the, eh, yeah, the smaller, more elite Numenorians, we've got the Misty Mountain uh, Gobos. Um, we've got the Moria Spear Guard there, still with their AP Berserkers to their side. Um, some standard infantry, but with some nice armor upgrades. The War Engine, uh, this sort of massive Manganel creature, well, creation with a huge swarm of goblins uh, to keep it manned, of course. So when this is done, these goblins, of course, not really proving much uh, use in melee, but that's 251 guys just to just to dedicate to the grind. Um, Black Orcs off the mountain, Fearmongers there. We do have the dreaded Drakes, which uh, could prove useful, well, at any point in the battle, really. I was going to say later, but anytime you can get some good work with them. And then, of course, Crossbowmen as his main sort of ranged component with the Kingsguard at the back with their generals. They no longer commanded by Bolg. They are, uh, or yes, yeah, uh, no, no longer commanded by a nice, fearsome uh, white orc uh, or white. Uh, Wait, Uruk? I should know. I should know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but just by a uh, uh, a rather tall, fearsome gobble. First, the defenders is Tommy playing his runic forces. There, he's got his golden raiders. This sort of uh, nicely armored in this case. Oh, they are shielded. Ah, okay. I didn't think they were shielded, but no, it's um, they're a crossbow mounted crossbowmen. We know how devastating mounted crossbowmen are in sieges so bit frightening bit of armor on them too and that shield a lot more difficult to bring down than the likes of these merc crossbowmen from Adin. so that's more so that's what four units of mounted crossbows that we're going to be having to get through very very messy but again even the mounted crossbowmen they may be lacking that shield but they do have a decent armor value so they're pretty pretty tough to get through uh, this is Hidden, of course, playing as Cardolan, uh, who I think actually might actually have access to Mark Crosswoman as well, do they? Uh, either way, he's got his Dunedain Captains here. Um, must be with an armor upgrade to give them that sort of uh, royal court look. They look absolutely stunning, don't they? I'm going to grab a quick shot of this just in case I forget to take something later on. Uh, because this is a... To be honest, it's a unit that I probably won't be using too much, but seeing them like this, god, they do look good. If I knew I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy Cav, I would probably take something like that. Um, because, yeah, well, one, they look gorgeous, and two, uh, I'm sure that they are very, very effective. Uh, over here, we've got the mess of, of Hobbitry. We've got the skin changers, skin changers on the walls. We saw during that car, uh, that Kera not Kera Andrus, Karn Doom fight, uh, just how menacing those skin changers could be on the walls. So it's something that I'm going to have to be very, very careful about. Uh, lots and lots of hobbits to back them up. Battling Brandy Bucks and Hobbitry in arms. Back here, we do have the Long Bottom Mob. Um, a nice mess. Some Hood Berserkers. Southron Warband. Uh, Serpent Archers there. We're seeing everything move. I'm getting a little bit of a frame stutter. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully that subsides soon. Southron Archers there. Some Ruffians. Plus these Cardinal and Men at Arms, Groomy Garrison Footmen behind them, and the Toll Keepers. Uh, yeah, very, like, got to keep in mind, sometimes I look at the Toll Keepers, I think of them as like a militia force for some reason. But no, they are actually like good mid tier spearmen. Sort of definitely in line with the rest of the, sort of the Cardinal and Men at Arms tier. Uh, lots and lots of these trolls. And of course, yeah, so Warlord playing as, the, as another one of these defenders as Harad. Uh, so it is a four man team. We've got Harad, Rune, uh, Cardlin and uh, the Hobbit folk, or the, the Shire folk, as I think the faction's called. Champions in Afrat, of course, as I said. Southern Warband. Anything wild further back. They do have a trebuchet that we're going to have to keep in mind. And all the way in the back here, they do also have the, the you know, absolute dreaded Dragon's Breath cannon looking absolutely stunning. Um alongside again i just like this little avenue this little avenue is really really cool to me and then the proud protectors as well nothing at the very very back though um yeah they've got what one line not two lines almost like this could be I mean, that's two choke points but no I, i'm just talking about walls here two lines three lines so you've got three walls to get through here 
Uh, we do also have this little harbour area. There is a bit of fighting that happens in this area. Um, I, I, I'll spoil that now just so that you do know we do actually get some combat just about all across the city, which I think is a really cool thing about this, uh, about this battle. A lot of the time you've, you've got a beautiful siege map with so much interest, so many interesting features dotted around, but uh, you only actually end up having the fight in one area. I've jumped to two times speed there. Please check the description. I do suspect this is going to be a long time before we actually do get some... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, no, no, we're actually underway. We're underway. Um, hopefully you have checked the description and you will have jumped to this point. Um, but yeah, as always, feel free to jump around because we do have quite a long sort of skirmish phase. Um, quite a long time where we're messing about with, with cavalry and, and chariots. So if that's not your thing, feel free to jump ahead. Um absolutely no problem at all with that uh wayne riders rushing across this bridge um we can cross these bridges but it looked like the boys just went for uh, the easier option of, of taking the taking the the land bridge or the the a uh, high ground on the under the under the surface of the shallow waters i should know this i am a boatman um but yeah this, the spear guard tried to run over here to block this up but the wayne riders were a bit too fast and uh they are going to be getting through. That's going to be some good stabs. You know, that's those are AP spears. They're not incredibly high damage, but AP is going to be really hurting. We can see one chariot has already gone down. This chariot is no doubt pretty damaged. I think, I mean, there's multiple hit points on these chariots, at least three. Um, I don't quite know exactly how many, but quite a few. And that's quite a high damage arrow that they're sending out. That guy, of course, getting uh, gatted down by that one shot, even though it was straight to his face. Of course, I did just point at my at my monitor with my with my finger there, um, which you cannot see. But no, anyway, yeah, so the Wayne Riders darting over. You see the impressive range of them. So now that they're across, Tintin's in a bit of a bit of a nasty spot here. Uh, I mean, those Wayne Riders, they could start trying to look for a decent target. I mean, getting some shots into the Drakes would be lovely. And also, there's no melee cav over here. Both uh, myself and Dol Amroth have melee cavalry, but we're deployed on the other side. We can't act. We can't do anything to assist over here. The only way we can assist is by crossing. I, that's something I really like about Kier Andros. You've got that same thing with with Osgiliath as well. Um, you know, where half the army is actually well, half the attackers are on totally opposite side of the the field. So you can't cooperate in the same way, and you do need to make sure that you've all got the tools to deal with this. Not that one unit of melee cavalry is really going to deal with these Wayne Riders, but say if I had my Cold Fell Maidens over here, oh, I'd be loving life. The girls would be, of course, taking a good bit of damage, but they'd be able to just run up and keep throwing their javelins, running away from the chariots, just having a jolly good time. It'd be absolutely perfect use for them. Uh, I'm crossing over here, sort of taking my time. I don't want to of course, come in too much before Dol Amroth. Um, I've said this before, you know, when you've got, when you're playing as Rude Hour or something, you do need to be aware of just how fragile your guys are to range fire. And when you've got somebody like Dol Amroth, a dwarf or Gondor, you know, or just a standard Western Kingdom of Man, really, that's got a bit of armor on him, they can, uh, they can maybe come up first uh, to take some hits for you. But I'm well saying that, I mean, what we've got arrayed against us right now are these uh, these Merc crossbows. So something like my Rudar clansmen who don't rely on armor, they rely on that heavy shield. That is actually a bit of a a bit of a stuff you to them, to be honest. Over here at Moria Shieldguard taking more hits. Bit of a shame. Definitely if they're taking hits from the from the aft, from the back there, trying to make up for my um, my boat to uh, lack of boat knowledge. Um that's gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a shame for them, not getting that sturdy shield value in play. But, I mean, if this is how we're using up Tommy's ammo, there, there's worse units to be losing. Only issue is, of course, you know, we do kind of need these Moria Shield Guard. And also, those chariots have a lot of ammo. They don't have a very big unit size. They can't really do damage exceptionally quickly because of the how few archers. You know, we actually only really have one bowman. No, we, sorry, we do have two. We do have two bowmen. They're firing away. These shield guard note again taking that to the face but such a tightly packed unit and, well i was going to say none of the boys are missing but a few of them are managing to fighting to thread the needle and actually miss these uh, poor gobbles but uh, still a bit nasty tintin getting a little bit picked on but as much as a shame as it is 
if somebody's going to get picked on, I'd prefer it to be the goblins. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what they're built for. But you see, I'm just doing this little leapfrog for where we're trying to be a bit safe, keeping my, keeping my Rudar Marksmen and my Herenidine Rangers in behind them. So say if he did want to come forward with his crossbowman and try and take a pot shot at something, my Herenidine Rangers are going to, are going to dissuade him real, real quick. Along with that, the Rudar Marksman, not a poor quality archer by any stretch. For an evil man, I should say. Uh, Merc Crosswoman coming forward there. Are they actually... Whoa! Sorry, I need to zoom in. They are getting those shots off. That's some good range, boys. Very good range. Um, are they going into the Snow Trolls? Interesting shooting. They are shooting. Let me just pause for a minute and see where we're actually going. Not here. Head in. What are you blasting? Now they're pulling out either way. It's... Um, I'm not actually against shooting things like snow trolls. As, as long as um, you're actually in a situation where you're going to be hitting the boys, you know, hell yeah, hell yeah, I, I'm okay with shooting stuff like that, trying to whittle them down a little. Uh, they do have a shield. Um, I wonder what the shield value is for a snow troll. I don't actually know it. Because uh, that, that was coming to the left side, so they would have received that shield bonus when they did get hit. Wayne Rider still pouring shots in. Crossbowmen, okay. To be honest, I really would be tempted to shoot the drakes. Such a big uh, model, whittling down some of those hit points. You're not going to really inflict casualties too quick against something so sturdy, but uh, hey, it's something. Uh, and because of those Wayne Riders, the boys really are, they're having to come forward in a much less organized, uh, yeah, just, just much more, much quicker way than we are. Because we're not being pressed, you know, we're, we're coming forward, just chill, just really relax. You know, you can see over here even, you know, because I saw what happened over at the other end, you know, Tweak and I, we were chatting a lot all in a Discord channel together. So he did say, you know, please block up that bridge. So <laughs> I did get uh, a Rudar clansman over there uh, to make sure that they couldn't punish us in that way. But you see Tweak's sort of going to be following on with, uh, with a few troops as well. Uh, so I'm just going to get my spearmen up there, block that avenue, get these Rudar clansmen over here, block this. Again, if they want to shoot my Rudar clansmen, it's just not going to be an effective trade for them. Not really something they want to do. Um, just because I, I don't know, I've got I've got a little bit of a fear today. Let me just check that I'm recording. I'm sure I am. Good, good, good. Yeah, I was, I was. So we're jumping back into it now. Um, these Shire folk about to blast off with their crossbows again. I do like I do like a lot of the Shires like armor and stuff, just because it looks looks a lot more basic. You know, not not really. Um, not as much flair as what you get from uh, from most of these Numenorean descendant forces. Just just much more sort of function going on there. It's quite it's quite cool. And I, I do I do like it. Mountain Orc Berserker is actually taking the fire there. That's an interesting choice. I mean, because of how many Mountain Crossbowmen the defenders actually have, they can be a lot more free with them than uh, than you normally would see. I don't know if I'd normally shoot something like the Mountain Orc Berserkers with a crossbow just because they're so low in armor, but because of how important they are, you know, and they are these two hit point forces, two hit point troops, maybe, maybe it is sort of worth it. Spear Guard again chasing off these Wayne Riders, you can see just how many, down to just over, well, just under 200 now of these Spear Guard, as they, you know, they've thrown themselves into the eternal charge to, uh, to try and reach the Wayne Riders, but Wayne Riders, of course, easily able to just stay away from them. But as you can see, Tintin has just had to basically dedicate these two units to keeping back this one unit of Wayne Riders, which is a right pain. Over here, you can see Golden Raiders and the Merc Crossbowmen chilling out, Eastron and Westron side by side in their love of crossbows uh, to stare down the approaching Numenorians. Over here again. Now, this is really, you could definitely argue that because of the situation on the other side, I should have been a lot faster. I definitely would accept that. You know, I, I definitely, uh, you know, understand that criticism. I could have been a lot faster here. I could have tried to force them off this position a lot quicker or, or maybe even tried to catch some of these units. But uh, I think just because of the amount of cavalry and we do, we've got those, uh, those Dunedain captains as well. They may be melee cavalry, but uh, a charge from something like that is always going to be unpleasant. You can see over here, Tommy is still firing in. With his crossbows, he's got a great little shot from uh, from this hilltop. But what the heck's going on? My cat's... 
My cat was just sneezing. He's just rolling around and sneezing right now. Poor, poor boy. I'll check on him in a bit. Um, Steel Bowman there from the from Red Knight opening up into the Golden Raiders. I, I do like to save my my uh, Steel Bow ammunition as much as I can. But yeah, I mean, if you've got a clear shot on something like the Golden Raiders, I'd, I'd probably go for that. Um, almost getting caught by the Spear Guard here. I think they actually will. Very lucky there from Tommy. Had um, had Tintin. Ten -ten. Tintin's probably microwaying over at the other side of the bridge right now. But had Tintin -ten saw that, he could have made that very, very bloody for Tommy. As uh, as it does look like, you know, because we're approaching on this side too now, and the uh, the misty Numenorean force is uh, is coming in from this end. They they are starting to pull on back now. And yeah, so we're we're starting to really claim some ground properly here the haven knights are up as well so i mean yeah if those dunedain captains did want to have a scrap this is certainly a unit that could uh could go toe to toe with them my, my cold fell maidens not so much but they're there <laughs> they're there and ready to do their part and unshielded those dunedain captains are unshielded as well so a little javelin to the face is uh, is going to be a bit nasty Oh, we, oh well, and I think I might have actually been trying to chase them down there. I think I might have actually been trying to trying to go for that. Um, well, they do look good. I do like. Uh, oh, and their captain there is is pretty dope. He's like a mounted, uh, mounted like Cardinal Man at Arms. He's very cool looking. Um, Golden Raiders again. I mean, if the Golden Raiders want to open up into my Coldfell Maidens, uh, I wouldn't be happy about that. But I can still get some good use out of these girls, even if they get dropped a few you know drop down a few uh, numbers uh i could still and you see i'd have spread them out um just because i'm sort of preempting um those shots but you see the moria she moria spear guard yeah spear guard i thought there was shield guard but spear guard i think is a better shout for them just so that it's you know it's immediately clear they're spearmen yes they have a shield but they're spears um so they are they're coming forward i don't know why it works for the numenorians maybe i don't know yeah so they'll keep pressing these guys back but even if they do run back that way we've not blocked off the center exit entrance yet or this eastern entrance so they could try and just run away from that and escape out again through somewhere else oh sorry saying that i have i plugged this gap with a rudar clansman unit and i will be moving forward yet this other rudar clansman unit it's going to take more than one unit to sort of block that whole passage, but uh, I can start trying to get it filled up. And over here, Spear Guard again, just chasing these uh, Merc Crossbowmen away. Don't think the Merc Crossbows are wanting to... Oh, no. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, if, if I could take that fire straight to my face, which some of those shots were like hitting some guys' backs as they were reforming, but if I could take that to, to my front, I'd, I'd take that. It's a right shame. It's again. It's such a shame to lose these spear guard, um, especially because again, Ten Ten is just being our our punching bag right now. He's taking these hits so that nobody else really has to. And uh, as much of a shame as it is, that's kind of what the gobos are there for. Um, so you know, that's that's uh, yeah, fair fair enough. Shots coming into the right side there. You can see. I mean, jeepers sake, they're down. Uh, they're down. What a hundred guys here the spear guard and that has just been from the wayne rider fire but that's a lot of shots that those wayne riders have gone through they I, i'm stressing they have a lot of ammo you can't really just um you know sit and wait out the wayne riders uh, you know they, they've got a whole chariot worth they've got huge quivers on their sides they can keep uh, keep going for ages they can keep going for as long as they want to but it looks like both units of spear guard they've done their duty now so they can start pulling back and now what we can do is just basically block up this passageway and we can stop the Wayne Riders from coming. S block this up, put one unit of crossbowmen behind them on the high ground. Golden. Finito. No more Wayne Riders to deal with, right? So, and over here, yeah, Dol Amroth arriving. And this is another... I was wanting to make sure my guys didn't get winded. Um, it's not the... It's not, an, it's not a big game ender... But it's just a bit of a shame. It's not really something you want. You see all of these Dol Amroth forces are winded. Hopefully they get a little, uh, you know, few minutes to just rest behind those buildings and gather their strength. Because we really need these, uh, those Dol Amroth men at arms, they're not going to be big killers anyway. They're not going to be rolling in and, and gutting everybody unless they're up against those hobbits or something like that. Maybe they can do some good work against them. 
Uh, oh dear, some shots coming in to the right side of the Haven Knights. So not uh, not getting that shield value there. And that's uh, it's, it's just coming from the Cardlin Archers. Not a very not an exceptionally high damage archer by any stretch, but uh, yeah, not not really something you want to be getting hit by. Um, I adore the look of the Cardlin Archers, of course, but again, it's not a unit that I'm taking too much. Um, but you know, that's mainly because I'm taking Cardlin to field battles, which I'm always going to take the Sharpshooters for instead. Uh, Rudar clan's been here, so what I'm blocking, yeah, so I've blocked that avenue, I've blocked this avenue. Right now, I've not really taken much damage at all. Um, maybe a few, like a little bit of a hit or two to my Cold Film Maidens. No, though, they're still in full unit size. Um, and you can see now, now we're just coming forward with the full mass of our forces. Uh, there's a bit of a reshuffle now, so again, oh dear, one of these knights has gone down. So again, got to stress, feel free to jump ahead, jump around uh, as much as you want. Watch the videos at uh, whatever speed is comfortable to you. I do talk pretty slow. It's just my vibe. So um, feel free to, as I always say, enjoy my content however you, uh, however is best for you. I've got my Herenidine Rangers here. Now, Hale, if if you're worried about them outranging something like the uh, the Moria the Moria crossbowmen, they ain't. They, <laughs> there's no chance that they're going to be outranging the Herenidine Rangers when I've got the high ground. When I've got such a beautiful high ground as this, so I poured a few hits into them. Actually, dropped one of them, and hopefully inflicted a bit more damage to the rest of them. So again, this is just us wanting to block this approach, really just keep this Wayne Rider force, because it's done a lot of damage so far. It's not paid for itself yet, because it's generally been shooting some cheaper units, and it is very expensive, so it's not really paid for itself. And we need to try and deny Tommy the chance to let him do that. And uh, and hopefully, you know, I'll keep these Herenidine Rangers here. We'll keep a blocker unit sat, uh, sat about there. I'll have my Coldfell Maidens kicking about. You did see I tried to chase them down, but... I'm not going to have my Coldfell Maidens chasing them around willy-nilly in the in the open field. Um, you know, I don't think it's necessary for that. So we'll just uh, we'll just wait for them for the time being. And do we actually? We still have some gobbles over there. I'm seeing some blue markings. Dear, maybe I should have. Ah, dear, I should have sent my Coldfell Maidens down to try and help get these goblins out. That's uh, that's a bit of a shame. Sorry about this, uh, Ten Ten. And again, they're getting shot right from the back, so you're seeing their numbers really depleting there. That's what, over 10, you're, they're losing about 10 guys per volley, which for such an armoured unit, uh, you know, the goblins, they may not be great at defending themselves. Ah, good, cool, cool, cool. So I did uh, I did see the the error of my ways. These uh, these heroic maidens trying to come in, try and save their little gobble friends. You know, I'd much rather you take an arrow for me later on, goblin. Than, uh, than right now. So I'm trying I'm trying to run in just to scare off these Wayne Riders if I can and uh, and help uh, Tintin get whatever he can back. Uh, so I'm not really, I'm not pushing forward to, to engage and wipe out the Wayne Riders here. All I'm, all I'm trying to do is get him to, uh, to, to, to leave, <laughs> to leave these poor goblins alone. Um, you know, let my friends get some peace. And they are starting to pull back. I'm going to have to take some losses here, these Coldfell Maidens. They may be shielded, but they are not well armoured. So, oh right, they, ah, well done girls, you took that, uh, took like, like champs. I really should have kept the charge going, you can see, yeah, I did that. Uh, I did end up giving them a movement order after. They got off one volley, but then they sort of stopped at their max range, but they really should have just kept on charging. Because uh, my big problem is going to be, as soon as I turn around to show the enemy my back, I'm going to get dropped real quick. That's Rude Hour's thing, generally. Decent shield values, poor armor. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, again, I really should have chased him a bit harder, maybe. Because he's immediately just turning around on me again. But I might have just been looking at this as a situation of, like, let's just get the spear guard back. And I've seen, like, that's enough of a distance now. Let's get out of there. I'm not, I'm not wanting to lose my maidens just yet. Uh, I still need them to, to sort of back up my forces. Red Knight with these Numenorean cohort lined up and ready to go. If they get some nice one-on-one -on -one fights with their descendants, the uh, the Cardlin Men at Arms, it's going to be nasty for the defenders. We really do need to make sure that uh, these Numenorean cohort are getting some getting some good fights, getting that uh, that Dunedain. Well, yeah, Numenorean at this point, but getting that uh, that heavy strength used up against their adversaries. 
tweak generally coming in here. You can see I'm kind of mixed myself in half. Half of me is going to be going into the middle, half of me is going into the right. And generally it looks like Tweak is primarily going to be going into the right, Numenor is going to be going into the centre, and Tintin is going to be going into the, into the left. I'll be doing a bit, of a bit of chatting about like what I was thinking throughout the battle, I guess, but uh, Wayne Rider's now moving forward. I do have my cold fells coming back. Still at 51 girls. It's a bit um, bit nasty, you know, but didn't lose too many of them. And I did try to try to save some of those spear guard. Now, issue is they have uh, approached and they're still in range. You can see I've kind of maybe goofed up a little bit. I've given a, I've given a, ooh, come on boys, I need you to get back. No. Oh. Yeah, so again, he's come for and he's bullying those spear guard. Do we have anything to sort that? Well, what we have to sort that is my Herenidine Rangers, but for some reason, the silly Billy is moving him away. This is the perfect time for them. We need those Herenidine Rangers over here, dude. Uh, Coldfell Maidens even, something. I don't know, maybe, I think I was focused on, during this time, I think I was maybe focused on my battle plan over here. Uh, getting ready to actually launch the main assault. I wasn't thinking about, uh, I wasn't thinking about that right now. Which is... Ooh, yep, you see the rangers running back as quick as they can now. Spear guard down to 80 now. So that's a lot of boys that are just getting deleted by this fire. Yeah, you see, I, so I've spotted it now. So I must have just, my attention must have been elsewhere. I must have sent these guys over thinking that it was no longer a threat when it was the most threatening time. But I need those rangers to open up. Surely you're in range, dudes. But getting the Coalfell Maidens over here, if I can get them positioned up on this uh, up on this slope, same area that we had those uh, Golden Raiders on previously, I can throw on down. But now it looks like that's maybe warded them off. But again, that's down to 71 Spear Guards. Such a shame. But I will be leaving the, the Rangers there now, just to, just to keep those boys off. Over here, we have busted open the centre defence. As for the defenders, it looks like Cardlin, um, alongside some Haradrim, are on the centre. It's mainly the Hobbit folk over on this side. We have actually started to arrive on the walls, these Dol Amroth forces being the first there. Uh, which again, sucks for them. But, we need the armour up there. Um, so, good for them. We've got those uh, Bjornings. Uh, are they called Bjornings? No, they're skin changers. Um... They were on the walls, sort of wearing, you know, fending that off, but no, now they're standing in the main gate. They're having a lovely time up against those Haradrim spears, and the glorious thing is they've come down and they're showing the left side off. Um, so that means that, say, if you're if you're sitting up here uh, as a long bottom mob member, uh, for say, and you're wanting to throw at them, you're hitting the left side, you're hitting the shield. Let me just be repositioning my foot map. I don't know why I talk about it a bit, but like I just seem to do this constant like sidestepping while I'm talking, and it slowly shifts my foot mat to the left, so it ends up getting like halfway squished up against my table. It's a bit odd. Spearmen there, as long as their morale holds, which we, I mean, in a perfect world, uh, I would have my like general unit like tucked in here. He's quite he's you know safe enough tucked in over there just to make sure these guys hold out as long as they can because they're getting fire ammunition against them now. Is it Band of Brass Archers or the, the Dunedain Rangers? It's the... Uh... No? Well, nobody right now. It looks like, again, they don't want to use their ammunition on this. They know that, that what we're trying to do here is, is soak up their ammo. And when you've got something like the Battling Brandy Bucks with their AP, those heavy clubs... Oh, and even the Farmers of Buckland, you're seeing those nasty scythes. Um, oh, actually, sorry. Are Farmers of Buckland... Oh, no, I guess Battling Brandy Bucks just have... Uh... Yeah, no, they've got scythes now too. Are Farmers of Buckland a thing anymore? They might not be. Maybe maybe because uh, a lot of units did have to get cut to make way for, for the new factions. So I think Farmers of Buckland, one of the most powerful Hobbit forces that we had, uh, they might be gone. Um, those incredibly brave locked morale uh, farmer boys. Uh, fantastic. So yeah, Numenor and Cohort coming up here. We did, it looks like we've actually taken some shots into the Cardlin... Uh, Forces, looks dead Cardlin archers on the ground, not uh, men at arms. Cardlin men at arms, great thing to have on the walls. Usually more than a match for the first wave of, of attackers, but when that first wave are Numenorean cohort, that's a different story. Let's see, this is the exact fight that I was really hoping to get. Right now we're seeing victory is certain. That's going to change very, very soon as more and more of the, the ancestors of these uh, Cardlin men at arms come in to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. 
Uh, still saying defeat is certain, but we're, you're immediately seeing from the front line the amount of Cardlin uh, men at arms that are dropping here. That is going to be changing. Are we advancing over here too? No, we're not. I would have loved to come in. I mean, this is even, it's more Cardlin men at arms that are coming forward. I would be wanting to swarm on here, and I'm wondering why I am not. Rudar clansmen actually coming in through the main gate. That's because uh, I, I do like to focus on my actions a bit. Alongside these Gobble Infantry, I'm sending in my Rudar Clansmen. Just get a little bit of a spear damage up, up against those Tharbad Toolkeepers. Tharbad Toolkeepers, of course, a lot more armoured than my Clansmen. But my Clansmen really giving a good shunt with that spear. Very damaging uh, for a Spearman, uh, those Rudar Clansmen. Let me just have a quick zoom over here. What is this blue unit? Is it a routing um, unit? No, I don't see it. It might be a little... Oh no, there they are. <laughs> Fantastic. Two Black Uruks just uh, tucked in on that slope, um, left behind by the rest of their unit. Uh, they're, uh, they're just tucked in there observing the, uh, the chariot crew. Over here, Numenor and Cohort coming in through the main gate, alongside the rest of us. I'm not trying to do a shield wall push or anything, I'm just kind of happy enough with, with the grind right now. And you can see we're inflicting a lot of casualties very quickly against those Tharbad uh, Toolkeepers, and yeah, I'm getting some good kills, which, as an attacker, sometimes that's that's all that's all you really want. You just want to be getting stuck in. Now, here's a bit of a test. Here was a bit of a test. Uh, I got my Rudar Swordsman up there, grinding away, having a good, having a jolly good time. Oh yeah, because that was the thing. Um, the Spearmen loved fighting the, the Haradrim Spears, but they hated the Battling Brandy Bucks. Well, hey, what's a good count of the Battling Brandy Bucks? My Rudar Swordsman. I don't care about armor, and I'm just coming in with a really sharp sword and a heavy arm. I'll go in, I'll kill the Battling Brandy Bucks for you. You keep killing those Spearmen. But then, of course, the Skin Changers turn up, and nobody likes to fight the Skin Changers. But who might like to fight the Skin Changers? Maybe Black Wolves. They've got a big ol' axe. We can start hacking down those bear men. So this is, because um, I'm still trying to like experiment how to deal with this, because this is such a powerful thing right now in Reforge, is like trolls and skin changers on the walls. You can see just how many of the guys, those, those massive bears are absolutely ripping open. So I was like, how, how do we counter this? And Black Wolves to me really felt like a possibility. You know, uh, so that's why I'm sending in these Black Wolves. So these Black Wolves are unfortunately going to be getting very, very few kills. But you're seeing those skin changers are getting bloodied up as we are just coming in with those heavy, heavy swipes. Bit of defensive skill for Rudauer, a lot of defensive skill. Those Black Wolves actually quite, quite competent. Got a lot of natural ability to dodge out of the way of strikes that are coming at them. So, bit, bit grim, very grim actually. But I, I felt that this, I felt okay about this. You're seeing this one. Oh no, he was surrounded by battling brandy bucks. Um, my Rudar Swordsman unfortunately getting getting shunted out of that fight by the Black Wolves, but yeah. So nasty as this is, I felt something's got to fight the Skin Changers and maybe the Black Wolves are the troops to do it. And over here again, I really quite like this matchup. Rudar Swordsman coming in to the Battling Brandy Bucks. As long as the Skin Changers don't show up, as long as we don't get peppered with arrows, then this is a this is a fight I want to I want to you know keep going. So it looks like I'm really focusing a lot more on the right side than I was the center. Oh, saying that, I'm you know I'm popping up here. At the, my Rudar clansman popped up in the center. Still alongside Tweak. So again, we got some Dol Amroth forces over here too. Um, I was communicating. Oh my goodness me! Oh, holy smokes! Uh, a little bit of a frame starter there, just as the uh, as the Gobble War Machine opened up with that uh, that fire. Jeremy, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more frames, so I'm really sorry about that. Let's uh, let's try and slow down just so it's not as prevalent. Um, hopefully it's not as bad as it was in sort of the Karn Doom fight. If it does sort of um, keep up, then I do need to sort of work out what is causing that for me and uh, and see if we can get... Uh, if, if I have to, I will just sort of lower the, lower the graphics quite a lot um, and we'll just have to go through the battle as is. So... It, won't be quite as pretty, but uh, but I prefer that rather than than really just the grind that it can be sometimes. Um, over here again, really pushing in the gobbles and the Numenorians, really just shunting in through the center. I'm pretty sure that most of my uh, Rudar clansmen that I had moving in through the center are long dead at this point. But uh, we've hopefully made the enemy pay. No, I'm saying they're long dead. There's still 28 of them. Good on you, boys. Uh, as we as we sort of grind away. 
Now over here, you can see we have not actually made any movement toward the left side. Tommy, looks like Tommy was actually considering sort of fighting us out in the open, sort of blocking up that avenue. He sent out quite a few troops. It looks like it was the Gamp Brim alongside the Raiders. I like that vibe. So, you know, the Gamp Brim are sort of coming up, maybe just sitting here so that the Raiders can start firing off shots. But I'm pretty sure my Hyrenodyne Rangers popped up. I popped some shots his way and he decided, no, let's not do that. Uh, Wayne Riders just holding back hoping that we forget about them. But two units of Belgar footmen, and as I say, I'm my, my rangers and my maidens are waiting for them. Uh, right now, eight more troll hunters coming forward. And you can see already my my reserves that I was keeping sort of bundled up on this slope, my reserves are starting to get used up. Um, Rudar marksmen moving up, trying to just basically find a shot. As an attacker, sometimes you you know you can't take the best shot in the world. You've just got to look for look for what's decent and take it. Over here again, Cardinal Men at Arms just doing their part. Uh, it's a right shame for them, but it's what they're good at. It's just holding the line. Yeah, hacking and slashing as best they can. Up against another well armored Men at Arm. Nobody's really going to be getting many kills there, but they're just sort of keeping that going. Tharbad Warhammers there, looking absolutely stunning. Uh, that's an armor upgrade for them as well. I'm pretty sure. So they are going to be absolutely menacing on the front lines. And I think they've been sent in to respond to those trolls. Because right now those trolls, I mean, men at arms. Oh, that's, I thought that was a broken. It was the Tharbad troll keepers that were broken. Um, but that's a lot of troops there that are just not going to be doing an, anywhere near enough damage to those trolls to bring them down quickly. Men at arms there, 52 of them got broken. They will come back. Demons have emerged though. We do have some breaking on our lines though. Uh, but I do not have many troops in there. I've only really got those Rudar clansmen. Still 21 of them remaining, though. Uh, I've, I've managed to push over here. I've taken, uh, alongside Dol Amrath, we've taken this wall. So the dream is to push across here, run, run down there, and then we can actually move out this door. You've got to have a look at the architecture. You've got to find where you can sneak past. One sec. Let me... Nope, sorry, I'm waiting for important phone calls right now. Um, but nothing, uh, yeah, no, nothing crazy. Um, sorry, lots of important phone calls and so on. Um, so I thought that was my phone buzzing away. Long bottom mob arriving uh, now with the little stones to hurl into the front lines. Troll show axe throwers, didn't actually see these guys in the deployment. I, see, I tend not to take them too much. But I think it was just a case of up against Harad and uh, the the little Hobbit boys, both very lightly armored factions. I felt hell yeah, let's let's take them today. I tend to you know I like that AP usually. So you can see my Black Wolves have been absolutely minced, but we did drop those skin changers down pretty nicely. And then the Talon Knights coming in again, another unit of real quality uh, showing up to to try and finish them off. So we have been hurting them. It's, I think it's just going to be tough. You know, it's going to be expensive to deal with the units like that in melee. So my Rudar Swordsman, this will be interesting. I surely am not coming to backstab the skin changers. That would be a bit silly. Yes, good. I'm coming down here. This is nice. Coming down here, showing up right on the flank there, backing up the push that we've got coming in through with the, the Perithel champions in the center. I would zoom in, but God, all of these melee, all of these like melee brawls are just absolutely messy. Like, it's, there's not really front lines clashing. People seem to be mixed in amongst each other everywhere. Rudar Swordsman, yeah, really just pouring themselves in there right into the face of the Southern Pikes, who were having a good time a minute ago. Now, I don't think so much. More, sorry, not Rudar Swordsman. A few Rudar Swordsmen getting stuck there. So, 17 of them. Uh, but I've got my uh, troll shot, no, sorry, eight more troll hunters getting positioned up there, hoping to just try to, well, Shire Guard crossbowmen something something with some armor just pour a javelin into it berserkers there grinding away looks like my rudar marksmen that was a they they do have ammo this is the painful thing and they're getting demons <laughs> pouring into them oh so much demon fire absolutely ripped them open some of my horrendous pikes but mainly my my archers taking that got a nice little jewel here uh, well, Haven Guard versus Gap Brim. So that the fact that Gap Brim has survived. Whoa! All right, okay. 
he he fell over, he fell over, and either this troll just spun around and dumped the poor Gamp Rim, or as the Haven Guard fell over, he managed to knock this guy down. So down to very few units, only 31 of them. I think a lot of them still struggling to get up, but that is a nice little spot for my archers. I should be able to find some decent targets. We really, we need those demons dead. It'd be amazing if you could just have those two trolls run in and deal with the demons. But once again, we are not pushing this side. Tommy's sort of positioned himself just outside of it, but we don't really have anything advancing to this area right now. You can see the Wayne Riders have come on forward, but once again, I've opened up on them, fired a few arrows, and they've decided, nah, nah, it's not, it's not, it's not today, not today, boys. A few arrows coming in, very accurate arrows, very high damage. Um, Wayne Riders, of course, being very, very well armored, um, but just, yeah, still. When you've got that much ranger fire coming at you, it ain't pretty. I really should squish these guys together. There's no reason to have them in a spread formation right now. Get them, get them tight so that we can uh, yeah, just position them a bit better. Really claiming the walls now, this Dol Amroth Numenorean force. Only really the, the Cardinal Men at Arms on the far side still alive. Which is good, once we claim the walls we can start putting our archers on top of it. We can start using the likes of the Belflast Marines a bit more freely. And really get some good damage done. Yeah, you can see over here, some last few Cardlin, not Cardlin, uh, Rudar marksmen arriving, so they can start peppering shots into the lines now too. Or, well, wherever they may find them. Uh, Eight or more troll hunters again, just kind of let, yeah, let, letting their uh, javelins off a bit wildly here. Um, I don't really know how long I'm going to have this position for. It's a very high value position. Yeah, you can see I've been rinsing down these poor uh, Merc crossbowmen, uh, wanting to sort of yeah, shred their numbers a bit. But this is a very high damage position. You're seeing the Perithil, not Perithil. Why do I keep saying Perithil? Uh, the Belflast Marines really want it. Uh, and, you know, we're kind of getting in their way. So, so I'm trying to trying to think of a good uh, good uh, thing to describe it. But, oh dear, some of those uh, javelins firing straight up and over. When you've got a position like this, you don't want to hog it. You really just want to get out there, do your damage, and then get out of there. Because you're seeing some of those shots are coming up and over. That's my fault. Because you've got these rude hour swordsmen in front of them and some more troll hunters in front of them. Now, because of the close range there and the tight, the way that the enemies are very tightly packed up, um, it was definitely still doing some good damage. And yeah, we've chased away that unit of Merc Crossbows. This unit of Merc Crossbows, and yeah, those are Cardlin Merc Crossbows. Goodness sake. We've got, what, six? Six units of, uh, of mounted, um, mounted crossbowmen today to deal with. Absolutely brutal. Um, but yeah, chasing, uh, chasing those boys off. You can see, let's zoom in actually, I've not been using that too much right now. You can see the ground that we've taken there, you can see the blue across the wall, the green across this wall. We have this area pretty much under control. Now is really where the defenders need to start to, to decide, like, are they really throwing their resources into pushing us back and holding this area, holding this chaotic brawl, or is it time to fall back? thing with time to fall back is, you know, you need to be ready to fall back on all fronts. And we've not really made as much chaos over here, even though that was a great push down. They managed to get my guys pushed back. Um, and now they're actually shunting themselves up there with those uh, Cardlin archers. Belfast Marines should do okay in that fight. That should be an alright scrap for them. Until my uh, eight more troll hunters are finally finished their ammunition. Is this a fresh unit or is that the same unit? You can see they have actually, I think that is the same unit. You can see that they've been taking fire. Uh, but something I love about the more Troll Hunters is, once again, great shield, because Rudauer likes shields, and two, um, actual decent armor. They actually, yeah, they, they know how to make some, which again is quite a rarity for uh, for the likes of Rudauer. So when you're shooting at them, they can shrug off a lot of that fire. It looks like it's probably the, the Merc crossbows opening up on them a little bit. So I'm okay if you want to shoot me. I'd rather you shoot me than you shoot the Talon Knights, but it looks like the Talon Knights are taking their fair share of fire too. Uh, over here, Fraudrum Javs running up, not used up their ammunition. Uh, they are exceptional in melee. I really love the Fraudrum Javs in melee, but of course I'm needing to use those shots. Any more Troll Hunters in the back, Hurrenidine Rangers in the back here. This is not the same unit, this is my second unit of, uh, of Rangers. Need to try and find a, a good use for their ammo. Troll Hunters there, but that's... I mean, I've not received it. We've not heard the announcer say that we're down to half our men, but I must be very, very close to it if I've not already passed it. Because I was, uh, I mean, it tends to just be the way that I attack. I do tend to come in pretty, pretty wildly and lose a lot of my troops. Um, I tend to be the first of the attackers to be wiped out. 
and you can see here we've almost got a break of those uh those cardland men at arms it'd be great to get them broken so that we can rush on down and around behind this way get a very quick break on those ruffians uh stop these long bottom mob from throwing away at their well throwing away with their stones those stones very low damage but they are ap and they have a hell of a lot of them um so it's the long bottom mob are definitely something that during a siege if you have the time you will rack up kills over here unfortunately uh, oh no no we're still i thought i thought that was the attacker or i thought that was the defenders coming in to to push me off but no we've still got the rude our clansmen loosing their arrows that's one of our generals down i think that might be my no i'm seeing i've got my enslavers tucked in here uh but as i say my enslavers didn't have my general my general is in with the berserkers so no i think that that's uh no that wasn't me sometimes uh the only reason i see that is the the announcer can get a bit confused but yeah, that's great stuff from 1010 he's coming in here into the greenway garrison footman great shooting um yeah like i'm i'm, I'm a big big fan of that taking out the green greenway footman with something like the snag of skirms is a nice target especially as an attacker you've got to be a little bit more um free with what you're targeting uh than a defender you defender you really have to start to think sometimes about like oh is this a worthy target or not over here got my fraudrum jabs managed to push over get a decent position ah my my uh sorry herenidine berserkers are up top now as well uh of course wanting to use up all of that ammunition fraudrum jabs taking a bit of fire long bottom mob bit of a there yeah so not really the best target at all um that's not the amount of ammo that was me just deciding no okay let's just break these little hobbits um which we will do very very quickly oh am i in guard mode don't go for the long bottom up winnie bobs no winnie bobs yeah i think um that was me just feeling a little bit uh because we're having a lot of difficulty sort of getting through here but that was a that was not a smart move there Windy pops needed to save that ammo just deal with the boys in melee over here men are still holding still holding well they were wavering for a long long time but they're still uh, still holding it out yeah they're now getting a but but yeah they must have moved something out of the town center or something like that tommy is actually now moving you see the golden boys have generally been kept in reserve they've been waiting over here waiting to see if we are going to be making a movement on this side but we still haven't uh we've got troops waiting to to see if there's an opportunity for that later but now Tommy is starting to send some troops over, um, getting ready for um, getting ready for something like that. Having a quick uh, check on the Wayne Riders. Wayne Riders, yep, still standing by. Got the got the blockage in place. One of the Belagar Footmen is left, but we still have one Belagar Footman. Still have my Rangers, and we still have the Haven Knights. If we and the, of course the Coldhill Maidens, if we do want to try and grab them and stop them for good. Over here, Talon Knights grinding up. Again, Tweak just Tweak's just about everywhere on this battlefield. He's doing very, very well. Uh, sort of assisting everywhere with his heavy armor. You see over here, the Trollmen of Harad have had enough of these uh, Snaga Skirms. I'm doing the heroic thing of letting the Snaga Skirms die for me uh, by scrunching up against this corner here and trying to just make sure I use up as much ammo as I can. Because <laughs> these guys, because they lost so many of their numbers, they've still got half their ammo, I'm sure of that. What I maybe should have done here is tried to run down and maybe... Because if I had run down, I could have tried to squeeze through this gap and maybe get out. But those poor Snag are just, just in guard mode. Ten Ten trying to use up as much ammo as he can for them. They can't have too much of it left. They have been firing away. Tommy with his uh, single armor upgraded uh, crossbows opening up actually is that a single armor upgrade or is that them fresh because i think i know that's them unarmored i believe because with one armor upgrade they start all getting um helmets don't they and then two they become golden boys i'm just trying to think as with no armor upgrades do they even have that um that body armor they maybe don't i'll need to check at some point over here um again the eternal grind um as the Shire folk have moved up, but you can see it's Berserkers over there from Harad, but it's mainly just the Rangers now. Some routing Cardland archers getting out of there, routing from my uh, my brave four Rudar swordsmen and some more troll hunters up the top there. I really need to get some boys down and pushing around there just to get through. You can see over here pouring into the troll men. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a shame to shoot something so low on armor, but I'm more than happy to go for it because of how important they are. Really would want to get my Herenidine Berserker um, axes into them instead, but we are being pressed right now. Arguably, I could go into guard mode instead and just open up on them. But you can see here, Rangers moved up up against the Fraudrum Javs. Fraudrum Javs may be much lower in number now, but this is still a fight that is more... Uh, well, that is, that's, that's pretty comfortable for them. I say that as uh, their victory chance seems to be failing. Um, Dunedain Rangers, of course, being, being a Ranger unit, most Rangers have quite a lot of defensive ability, which means my heavy-ass club, which is more made for just breaking down the Western Kingdom's armor, is not going to be as nice, but once this uh, combat stabilizes a bit, my Fraudrum Jav should do okay. Deary me. Um, over here, Trollmen arriving. So yeah, we're getting squished now. Uh, Berserkers and uh, Fraudrum Javelin men fighting back to back there. Uh, as long as it stays in melee though, I'm okay with that. You know, as long, well, I, I mean, as long as we don't end up getting shot up, as long as my Berserkers can fight it out to the last, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm content. You can see here, oh, Trollmen being pulled away now. My Rudar Marksman being saved. As the Sentinels uh, have arrived, the Sentinels are definitely going to be something that uh, that needs to be answered to with something powerful like the Trollmen. You can see here, more assistance from Rune. These fresh Eastron forces, the Camels uh, Immortals, alongside the Flank Rim. Let me just uh, pause here while I take a quick gulp of tea. I've been mentioning it a bit, of course this video will be coming out in quite a long time I'm sure, but um, if there are any moments during a battle that you think are like particularly interesting, I'm trying to get into making some shorts. It's it's very quick and easy to do, making these shorts, and uh, I think it does sort of reach a different audience. It reaches sort of a little, uh, little bit of a different audience, which is good to sort of hopefully drag them in. Uh, so that's uh, that's nice. It's something I do want to do. So if you do catch a moment that we're seeing that you're like that was that's a really cool little thirty second uh, period, uh, please give that a shout to me in the comments, and I uh, I might chip uh, chip and chop the video a little bit and uh, I make a short out of it. So that's uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, and I'd be very grateful. Um, Berserkers here not enjoying this fight really. Trollmen are quite a, quite a menacing foe. Certainly something that they can deal with, but uh, not something that's too nice for them. Javelins, again, here, not doing too bad. They will best these rangers, as I say, but uh, it's just going to take time. Shire Guard set up and ready to go. So you can see the, the defenders have decided not to fall back at this time. They're, they're digging in uh, once more into the center. Now that they've received fresh reinforcements from Rune, they're able to do that. But you can see we've still pushed in. The narrow narrow sentinels, not really anything to not you know nothing's been set up to really deal with them. Alongside the shield guard too, that is just not a fun fight. We had a little blast there. Looks like maybe the the trebuchet somewhere. Perhaps I don't know uh, what was doing that. But either way, what were you, what was it? I think because we were meant to have an artillery piece, weren't we? I can't quite remember what happened uh, with us. I don't know why we didn't have any arty. Uh, oh, you can see up here, Dol, uh, sorry, Dol Amroth archers pouring into, I mean, anything down this avenue is a great target. It's either a Haradrim, a poorly armored Eastron crossbow. I mean, well, gatekeepers, yeah. <laughs> Very well armored and shielded, but you still need to get them dropped. The troll men, uh, there's still a few of the troll men on the walls. I think I'm firing point blank at them. I'm like, no, no, I'm shooting down. We're shooting down into the east. Oh, the demons. I think the demons was, uh, you know, they were who I was going for. Uh, Rudar Marksman, of course, being spearmen in melee nowadays. You can see that big old spear on their back. I do, I do like the whole sort of spear archer hybrid. Yeah, going into the demons, but with just 23 of them, that's not going to do the damage quick enough. If there was still a full unit of Rudar Marksmen, then this would be great. And I'm doing damage. They're very lightly armoured, those demons. They're two hit points, but they're very lightly armoured. So even that low damage arrow from the Rudar Marksmen is going to have an effect on them. I think I've maybe even dropped a few just from that uh, that shooting. You see the drakes. We did miss the drakes, unfortunately. Sorry about that, boys. But they have been used over here in the middle. More crossbows. 
This time's the Shire. Uh, the Shire crossbow is opening up into us. Again, and we've not been able to sort of bust open here. Even with my Hyrenodyne Rangers, my Hyrenodyne uh, Pikes involved too. These men of uh, Numenorean heritage. Very distant and ancient, but still Numenorean her heritage all the same. Over here, Rangers down to 25. How are my javelins? 18 javs. We need more than that. Over here, my Berserkers. 47 of the Berserkers. Trollmen still doing quite well. Well, maybe as much as a shame as it would be, I need to maybe just push the Berserkers around just to get them down here or something so that I can start pouring out my uh, my throwing axes. Eight more troll hunters there, out of ammunition, but uh, just breaking out into the center there. Unfortunately, just a second or two too late as the main line seems to have been broken through. Rangers, <laughs> defending Rangers pushing into the, uh, the archers off at the back. That's actually quite a good shout. Instead of reinforcing the lines, Tweak has just uh, set up some range, well, set up some archers to blast right through the uh, the gateway. Um, so the rangers, a bit, na bit nasty to them, but uh, with my more troll hunters there now, that gives them something to chew on, at least for a little while. These trollmen being pulled back. Finally, my berserker is getting a chance to use some ammo, and I mean, well, the trollmen would be a beautiful target for them. But at this point, I'd be more than happy just to get my Berserkers to throw it. Just do anything. Anything you want that axe to go into, uh, Mr. Scary Berserker Man, just you do it. Apart from this guy. Don't all throw at him. Don't know what they're up to. I might have been, my micro must have been elsewhere right now, which is a bit of a shame because I don't have that much to micro. <laughs> um, over here, let's see what's happened again. You can see we've started to pull it back entirely now. We're no, yeah, we've decided we don't have the troops to push in around that side anymore. So we just now need to gather everything we have and, and push into the town centre proper. We've sort of gathered this area. They have finally pulled back. The defenders are, are, are moving back to the second line of defence now. So we are uh, we're gathering up our forces inside, which means we don't need to uh, be as worried about those chariots coming to backstab us. Issue with that is, though, those chariots can now bypass us entirely and get back inside because we don't control this position yet. So we need to try and push in and take that area before the chariots do manage to rush on in. Still though, a few of these heroic defenders, um, where are they? <laughs> a few heroic defenders remaining back. Yeah, you can see that's why the troll men got pulled back from our lines. Dunedain Rangers getting pulled out too. My Berserkers still just sort of stuck there. I wonder, I'm, I could at least be going and finish the Rangers. I don't know what I'm doing with them. Saving a few of those Fraudrum Jabs or something. Um, Fraudrum Jabs there must have been out of ammo. I, but again, I don't know what I'm up to there. Ah dear, I've finally woken up, but uh, it's far too late now. I've only got Hobbitry and Arms in my sight. And that's not perhaps not really worth the axes, boys. But either way, uh, you know, a target is a target. Um, long bottom mob getting broken. Issue is again, because they're defending units, they are probably going to run back and uh, either get bugged out in the town centre or return. Even if they get bugged out in the town centre, we'll have to deal with them at some point. We can't just ignore them. We're going to have to fight them. Narrow and narrow sentinels there. Down to pretty low numbers. They were really instrumental in actually sort of making the final breach for us. Coldfell Maidens arriving inside now too. The, the long watch of the chariots is no longer necessary. So they can enter. Start running through and I, yeah, I was playing with them just run down. Get some, get some of these routing units captured. Make sure that they don't, uh, don't show up again. Maybe charge something like the Berserkers. There's small units that are dotted around. Really punish this. You can see... Or even grab something like the Merc Crossbows. Yeah, of course, too. I mean, something like the Merc Crossbows in melee, even though, of course, the, the Maidens, the Colfell Maidens, they may not be incredible melee cavalry. They have that spear bonus. They, they can definitely deal with something like the Merc Cav in melee. Or Merc, um, Merc Crossbows. Merc Cav, I think, might be... Oh, I don't actually know. I don't know how that fight would go, because Merc Cav do have a cavalry bonus. I do like the Merc Cav. Um, nice sort of cheap anti-cavalry uh, choice. Good thing to just catch enemy units. Wayne Riders over here, you can see they've not actually run in through the way I was expecting them to. They're pushing in through this avenue. 
uh, and we don't, yeah, we don't, we've taken this gate technically, but we don't have anything here. This has been a very, this has been very much a case of yes, you're, we're victorious, but we can, you know, we've really only got the ashes to cheer over now. Let's go to one time speed and see, because there's not. I think the frame starting was just because of how much death was happening in this area. Herendine Rangers here, that's a big beefy unit for Herendine Rangers. I'm getting them up on the walls, the um, main reason I'm just trying to do that is to get some shots onto the Wayne Riders. As the Cold Fell Maidens come running out, I want to make sure those uh, Seafarers, Nimd of Nimdamos, sorry, Seafarers of Nindamos get in. But I'm just getting my Cold Fell Maidens out there, get some jabs into these uh, Wayne Riders, just scare them off. Again, I'm not wanting to pursue those guys to the ends of the, ends of the earth, but uh, I'm just wanting to, ooh, wanting to scare them back a bit. So we managed to rack up two kills on them there. Part of that is due to the fire from my Herendine Rangers, though, of course, too. And now, I mean, for as long as they sit there, I'm more than happy for my Rangers just to open up on them. But the Colfell Maidens staying there until sort of the last few of the guys do try and get inside. But now we're, uh, now we're escaping on inside as well. So there is now a bit of shuffling about that is going on. We're back to sort of a, a skirmish phase. I always like this when you get in a siege like a multi-leveled siege or like a multi-stage siege where the enemy do pull back and you kind of enter into this skirmish once again, you know, and you're, everybody's kind of looking around thinking and taking a bit of a breath and working out how, how that all went. 31 of these berserkers down from those slopes now. Well, down from those slopes, down from the, uh, the castle walls now. Troll hunters there too. Uh, and that's basically all I've got. I've got my Coalfield Maidens, Troll Hunters, Berserkers, and those uh, those Herenidine Rangers. That's and that, that's it. Coalfield Maidens gather it in over here. Uh, Troll Hunters gathering from every every corner, it seems. Coalfield Maidens really just doing the duty of like trying to watch where the Wayne Riders are going now, trying to make sure that they can't get back in through these uh, these passageways. If they're going to get back in, they've got to come in through this way. Mark crossbows looks like they're just kind of on rear guard duty making sure that the last few defending forces do get routed back but uh, as I say because I've really taken a kicking in the outer areas it's I've, I've got to rely on my allies now I, I've got to just see what my allies are going to do same with Dol Amroth you know Tweak and I we are um, we're pretty bloodied so it is, uh, you know, in, at the start of this fight, it was Numenor and um, and Moria that was taking a bit of a beating from the from the chariots while we were kept safe. Now we've been taking a real serious kicking, and it's down. Uh, it's largely more down to them to lead the way, and uh, and we are. We'll have to see how we can fit into that. Fires and Swordmasters, though. Uh, will be well destructive to anything they get toe to toe with you know when you don't have say an elven defender or something like that to deal with you know you can be pretty sure that the Numenorians man for man are going to be uh, be able to best you and we don't have that you know we saw those Tharbad Warhammers getting sent on into melee very early I don't know if they got out alive I don't think so they've still got their trebuchet they've still got their cannon Anything elite. The gatekeeper's very impressive in melee, but not uh, not exactly a, a bodyguard, not an elite unit. With that armor upgrade especially uh, damaging. Proud Fruit Protectors, again, very, very good, but once more, you know, not elite. These last two Cardland men-at-arms standing side by side. The rest of their unit wiped out, but no, they're ready for action now too. That's quite a good... Uh, I always like when you've got just like handfuls of guys. It's very, very cool just at the end of a fight. Um, Dragon's Wrath crossbows, we've not had those used against us yet. The demons, though, have been used quite uh, quite extensively. Serpent archers, quite nasty to deal with. But what I'm looking for is something like the Champions and Naferat. I don't know where those guys are. If the Champions have been used, then that puts us in a much better position. But if the Champions are still kicking, then... Oh dear. Because the champions could go toe to toe with the fires and sword masters, can't beat them, but can match them for a bit for sure. But lacking something of that quality, which I think the defenders do lack, I, th I don't think the defenders have anything of like that supreme quality. They've been using them really. 
They've got some, some high tier units, as I say. Still got Sam as part of the Proud Foot Protectors there. Um, ready to uh, hold the line. But that's it. So really, if uh, at this point, I think it kind of comes down to this idea of like, can we get our elites into melee? If we can get our elites into melee without taking either an artillery strike or some serious range damage, then um, we're, we're still in for a damn good shot here. Even the likes of my berserkers, I mean, they're bloodied up, but they can, they can be a bit messy. You can see here, Tweak gathering the last of his forces. He's going to be making his way down uh, with this uh, with this a ram down through this avenue, breaking in through this door, and we're going to have to come in through this door. Uh, no more siege towers to use, unfortunately. So we will just be coming in through gateways. Uh, I don't think any of us brought ladders. I don't know if you can bring ladders to Kirandros. I think it might be because I I'm sure you can't because. I am a ladder guy. I like ladders. I will almost always take ladders if I can. So I don't think you can take ladders to Karanros. Just from the fact that I don't have them. Um, over here, again, I've just got my, my rangers. Kind of looking for a, maybe a shot against those Dunedain captains. That would be nice to pester those captains with the, the Cold Thumb Maidens. Maybe I should be doing that. But I think I was sort of viewing the, the chariots as more of a threat. So I wanted the Coalfell Maidens getting ready to deal with that. So once again, you know, Tweak and I, we've been fighting side by side throughout most of this fight. I was pretty keen to just uh, just see if we could, uh, you know, bring it home together anyway. Leave the um, leave the Numenorians and the Gobbles to burst in through the main gate. We'll we'll attack from there. We'll attack from the port. So that's uh, that's why I was coming down here. A few dead. Uh, oh yeah, these are the slain uh, Merc crossbowmen dropped by my javelin fire. Where are the Coldfell Maidens, eh? Don't actually know. <laughs> I've lost my horse. I've lost my horses. Um, yeah, no, where, wherever they are. Uh, you can see here, unfortunately, a uh, shot from the from the trebuchet, bringing some of those guys down. Another shot coming in. We do have a lot of cover around here, but you do have to be careful when you're moving through some of those open areas. Belagar footmen tucked in, so right here. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, there's not really anything they can do. Um, you can't move through there. You can see that it, it, it's a different wall structure. Yeah, it's... They, that that tower is... Yeah, so you can go there and get down there, but you can't go through it. That would be a bit scary. Gosh, if you could do that, that's you can get some crazy moves like that on Helm's Deep and stuff, and that can be very, very good. But the fact that we didn't do it makes me think you can't. I might, I might do a test at some point just to see if you can move through there, but I'm pretty sure you can't. Um, again, i uh, got to stress, I think there's probably going to be a little while before we do get another another clash. I don't want to speed it up too much because there is, uh, you know, there's movements going on, there's thinking happening here. So I do want to uh, do want to go through it all, but feel free to skip ahead to the next time you do see some swords clashing. Uh, tweet continuing on. Two Talon Knights, both of them banner carriers though, but they will be impressive banner carriers because they were part of that Talon Knight unit. Over here, the Ram, pushed by the archers with ammunition though, arriving. It's going to be important that we're coming in from as many avenues as we possibly can. Because we, well, we've only got two of them. So you've got to use both choke points here. If we try to just come in by ourselves, elite units or not, we're going to be getting ja well, not javelins, but we're getting crossbow fire, narim fire, artillery fire. Just everything's going to come right at us, and it's going to be it's going to be too much. Um, an issue though, we do have an access point here and an access point here, but to get between them, you have to go all the way around. Oh, do I captains there? Got a little charge off on the Berserkers. Berserkers got very lucky that they didn't get shredded there. Where are my Maidens? My Maidens might be dead, actually. I might have had, uh, I might have lost my Maidens. Surely not. I think my Maidens... Oh, uh, yeah, ah, my Maidens were out here guarding this ram. Because we needed another ram and we weren't uh, sure where to get one. Because uh, we were getting scared there was uh, chariots out here. So I sent my Coldfell Maidens out to guard the, the ram gathering team. But really, my maidens should have been on the, the captain hunting squad, we should say. 
But anyway, yeah, so to move between the two gateways, you have to go really far off. So you kind of have to assign the resources beforehand. Got to be a bit of forward thinking with it. But yeah, you can see over here, we have gathered up my last few berserkers, my troll hunters. I saw one other unit running in from behind too. What was that? Ah, no, an oh, one enslaver. I've got an enslaver left as well. Fantastic. So yeah, we do, uh, do have some elites there. Popping in right next to the berserkers, ready to uh, ready to fight side by side with them, trying to sort of claim some Herenidine heritage, perhaps. But uh, I mean, hell, if he survived all that, he's uh, he probably is a man of the Numenor, a uh, man of Numenorian blood. I do like these little buildings here; they're quite cute. Yeah, really, as again, really nice map. Um, ports are, of course, a big thing for me. Um, so just just cool, just very cool. Um, oh, we do have some uh, Haven Knights going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dunedin Captains, and I do want to get involved with that. You see the Call for Maidens arriving. Um, that, I mean, that would be a fight I'd love to sort of see going down. It was meant to be a one-on-one, -on -one, though, and the go and the Golden Raiders have turned up to, to deny that, so I've decided, no, stuff you guys. You're not uh, you're not interfering with this 1v1, this... Uh, this heroic battle of the champions. So no, we're coming on in. Kulthal Maidens should gut these Eastron. Uh, having that sort of spear bonus. Not Again, not incredible melee cavalry. But you can see how quickly those golden boys. Uh, nice sort of frail Eastron forces. Not quite um, not quite kitted out or capable of, of besting the northern woman. As we uh, as we slay them here. Making sure that the uh, the poor Haven Knights get that 1v1 fight. But you can see here, unfortunately, those Dunedin captains... Have, uh, have proved too much for them. Um, perhaps I should have focused on the Battle of the Champions that I was hyping up instead of focusing on the, <laughs> the side conflict there. But uh, yeah, you can see here that was uh, was a hell of a clash. But those Dunedin captains proving that they are really quite something there. Especially again with that armor upgrade, they can uh, they can deal an absolute kicking um, as they as they march on down. A few broken raiders. We're letting them flee in shame there. Probably shouldn't let them flee in shame, but it looks like hopefully some gobbles will grab the last few of them. Yeah, they're fighting for the death. That should be them gone. Um, I'm letting some javelins fly, which is maybe a bit of a mistake. Not the target. The target was definitely a good good choice, girls, but you just weren't going to be getting those uh, those hits in. Belgar footman pushing that ram forward now. Over here. Yeah, no, just 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 relax and just relax it for now. But we've chased that off. It's still 16 off them. So hey, maybe I did inflict some casually against them with my with my javelins. Cold fail means I've really just got to guard the bat off the uh, off the goblin lines for now. And now I've got to guard them from the uh, the chariots too, and another fresh unit of golden raiders as well. Not too nice, which is going to mean that these uh, these Dunedin captains are quite free to push on forward. And 16 to 6, as brave as those Haven Knights are, again, this might just be a bit beyond them. I'm trying to get my Berserkers in to back them up. Perhaps I should have shunted myself straight into melee instead of trying to throw an axe at them, though. Four of them left. No casualties inflicted to the captains. I've got my spearmen. I do have spears. Oh. That was a good yeet, boys. Oh, no. It was so close. But no. So we're just going to have to... Oh, oh, enslaver. My lord, sir, get back. Good. You got a little bit... You got a little bit over-enthusiastic. But hey, I mean, he could get a backstab. That's a tough choice. Do I hide him there or do I run him back? Well, either way, I should be running him. If I'm taking him back, I should be running him. He's fresh. Oh, no. Well, to be honest, if he if he takes that charge, you can see here they're preparing for it. Come on, boys. No, why did I do that? No. Sort of broke that charge a bit. Yeah, sort of broke that charge. Good. And trying to close them in. Trying to close them in. And Slaver even coming back on in. Good stuff. The Knight's getting a little bit of vengeance against these, uh, these Dunedin captains. Oh. Okay, not bad, not bad. Good little, good little catch there, boys. Some routing rangers. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I forgot this. I knew we had some infantry clashes going on. Um, they did, unfortunately, push out against us uh, after we broke the gate open. 
Uh, they decided to sort of sally down, but again, we're getting our clash. Dol Amroth and I are getting our final final battle here uh, on, on even fair terms, so that's, that's all we can really ask for. Even if there is uh, some cavalry pestering us. Let's see over here, because I'm trying to... The, the maidens, as I say, they've got their work cut out for them. There's a lot for them to protect, and there's a lot that they need to fend off. Are they... Ah, oh, they tried. They really did try. Um, I think I did sort of slice down. You see, I killed a good few more of the raiders. Killed, dropped another Wayne Rider or two as well, but uh, in this area. But no, all in all, it was just a bit too much for them to deal with, and they have been broken. So hey, maybe if they chase them down for a little bit, we might uh, get a little bit more peace. But that's uh, that's the goal for the maidens finished off. For very admirably today, I would say. More axes coming in, just trying to get my axes used. Preferably up against those uh, Dunedain captains, but at this point, just whatever I can. As the swarm of, of hobbits and Haradrim make their way down. The Shire Guard, very tough for us to best right now. Any sort of phalanx force is very messy. I mean, yeah, I mean, at this point, the Herendine Berserkers just need to go for whatever. Oh, good. I think we are going for the captains. Get them, boys. Good stuff. I mean, they are axes. They're not AP. But, oh, good stuff. That's a good few more captains taken out there. Along with the Etamore Troll Hunters and this Enslaver. Leading the uh, the Etamore Troll Hunters on this mission. Ignoring the rest of the infantry. This is not our concern. We are here to kill the captains. If we wipe out the captains, then that is a, that is a victory for us. Berserkers now my last uh, line of defense over here. My general ready to enter the fray. Again, up against this tide of troops. We caught them again, but they managed to slip out. Didn't manage to inflict any more casualties. And unfortunately, these trollmen are going to grab us. And we're just going to have to throw ourselves into that fight. So the berserkers now clashing away backs to the walls hopefully not really going to be getting a surround the single berserker there ready to get vengeance for the for his lost uh, companions as we continue to hack and break into the hobbit lines again if it's a hobbitry in arms that's a good fight for us but these uh, these shire guard once the shire guard get organized right now they're still shuffling a bit a bit tired themselves they've seen a lot of bloodshed today for their they're in a sort of, well, yeah, normally very peaceful lives, defending quite safe territory. This is quite a lot for them to deal with, um, taking a bit of time to get organised. But once they do, it's too much, and the tide is, is yeah, just getting wild for my... The single berserker still around. My Herendine berserker is just getting uh, getting overwhelmed. My general, whoop, breaking it. Good, good stuff. Getting another kill there, general. The Dunedain, I do like the idea that these surviving Dunedain rangers have seeked out the uh, the Herendain uh, general there. Wanted to sort of, uh, not really wanting to entrust that to the to the ranks of the middlemen and the hobbits. But these two fighting back to back now. Uh, that's one of our allies gone. Unfortunately, now it's being very cruel to Dol Armroth. I would say Tweak has yeah, done very, very well by my side today. Um, this general, unfortunately, having his, his remaining guard... Uh, drop the rest of them sort of spread out from him. Shagar getting some stomps in. I'm hoping to see he, he'll, he'll get a few more kills before he goes down. Right now he's kind of surrounded by oh, there's a lot of pikes, dearie me. Are we getting a push in the centre now? Almost, almost. I see this, this ram took us a while to get a hold of. That's why we were hanging about for a long time. But now we do have it. Merc crossbows are free from add in now. Uh, just free to sort of slam around. Not a great charge from them. But no, unfortunately that's my general dropped. The last few berserkers should fight to the bitter end. As bitter as it is. Getting knocked down. I think that was maybe the last guy. Yeah, no, that was him. So that's uh, some celebration for the defending forces now. As they no longer need to worry about an assault from the port side. Or by the port side, I mean the side of the port, not the left. Hey, boat memes. Again. I'm so good at it. Um, over there, yeah. And now, I mean, the Shire Guard can now make a... Make, if they want to, they can make a bit of a walk around, try and backstab our attacking forces. Shire Guard not too worried about any sort of uh, assault. Looks like, yeah, the, the Shire forces are going to be moving to do that. While the Haradrim uh, push on back inside. Getting ready to back up the rest of the defenders. 
here um, as... Oh no! Shoot! We missed them before. There is a unit of champions. Deary me. Okay, okay. That changes the game slightly. I mean, of course, the demons are very, very good in melee, you know, but they're not a dedicated melee force. I think that's... Oh no! I was going to say I think that's me, but it's not, is it? I've still got my rangers. They're... Whoa! A few of them getting burned up, unfortunately. Caught out in the open. But my rangers over here just trying to chase off the... Oh, and we did get a break on the crossbows. So that'll be uh, enough to catch them and wipe them out. So yeah, my, my Herendine rangers have used up their ammo. Pretty sure they were opening up into various cavalry units uh, throughout, the, throughout the day. Maybe, hopefully they'll pull out a bow, but I really don't think they will. Of course, ugh, I mean, I, I always gush over the goddamn Herendine rangers. I really just like them. I think they're such a cool model. Um, I like their swords. I just, yeah, I just really, really like them as, as a model. I think they're really cool dudes. Um, so no, but over over here, just kind of waiting for our chance now with them. Um, that's, i say it's my last unit on the field. Uh, 105 rangers. I mean, if I get a fair, what if I get like fair 1v1s, I can generally do um, some good work. Ugh. Again, blasting through the snag, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, if they get shot up, they're going to get... It's not going to be a good time at all. Even if we had, like, some ladders here or something, it'd be absolutely brutal. Uh, we could just sort of really flood those walls. I think I'm going to go to two times speed for a minute. Because there is just kind of shuffling now. I think we're having a bit of trouble with this ram getting that working. So we'll have to have to take some time with that. Uh, Proudfoot protectors, yeah, looking for various targets on that on that corner. You've got a real sort of I don't know what the what the real explanation of it well, I don't know what it's described as, but you know, when you've got a real kill box like this formed. That's my cat woken up. She likes to she sleeps awfully late. Poor girl's getting a bit old now, so she sleeps for quite a lot of the day. Uh, but no, that's her. That's her awake and now ready for the day. <laughs> uh, hides in, well, sleeps in my wardrobe. It's quite cute, but I do always worry about accidentally closing the wardrobe on her. Poor thing. Over here. No, just gathering up. As I say, it's the Farzim Swordmasters. Uh, I mean, I guess the Royal Legion of Armena lost too, but really is those these 66 Farzim Swordmasters as our, as our real only hope of victory uh, up against these forces the trebuchet from hidden getting moved out but you can see over here they have decided to sally forth um we will try to just make sure that we don't lose this gateway now as uh, as the numenorians come flooding on in we'll go back to one time speed now but coming straight on into the face of this golden force tommy of course being saved till the end he's got a lot of these these mid-tier very very decent mid-tier uh, golden and silver forces with the flag rim backed up by the gamp rim always a messy messy uh, force to get through and even some camels and mortar immortals with that heavy defensive skill or that great defensive skill uh, ready to uh, to go toe to toe as well um, backed up also by some pikes to yeah if anything the halberd can't reach of the gamp rim uh, the pike of the greenway footmen can uh, can certainly try so it is certainly a very, very nasty um, situation for us to try and push through. Not easy at all, um, as that trebuchet is gearing up. Our only real hope, yeah, you can see I'm coming on forward now too. I mean, this is kind of our, oh, and I kind of took that. I took that straight to the face, and I think that's my break. Yeah, that's me gone. Deary me. Yeah, so that was the, the Dragon's Breath cannon from up there, just getting that smash into us. Uh, breaking the gate a bit. And uh, yeah, you can see it's pretty much over now. That was really our last, uh, our last hurrah. Um, maybe if there wasn't an artillery strike against it, we could have stood a chance. You know, those fires and swordmasters would have been very difficult to get, uh, get beaten. In a perfect world, what I would have tried to do with those rangers, or get them up here, get them on the wall. Not that they can use their um, bows anymore. But the defenders are very, very low on range power. They've got these Dragon's Wrath crossbows and so on, but very, very little. Um, dear me, another blast. A few more of my rangers getting blown up there by that. Um, but the, Oh, it's funny because they now just said the enemy are through the gates because they're, uh, they're technically our gates when they were destroyed. Um, 
But yeah, so I would have tried to just get them up here, run them across this way, just to try and divert attention. That is all I would be trying to do with my rangers. Those rangers, not a great amount of attack ability, but just good defensive skill. Um, anything they sent to fight me, they'll just they'll just take a while to get me beaten. You know, I just try and run over here and say hide in this little corner um, and yeah, do do my best with that and uh, and hold out for as long as I could. Um, over here, Numenorean Shield Guard trying it out. Um, Champions in Afarat come on forward. You can see the fires of Swordmasters down to 21. You know, that was what we were dreading, of course. Just any sort of um, artillery strikes against us or anything like that. I really thought he returned. There, no. Did he return or not? So, as you can probably tell, you know, for a little while now, unfortunately, 1010 has been AFK. Uh, sort of not really been able to serve. That's why I've been sort of guarding the back of his lines there with the Coldfell Maidens and my rangers just trying to keep the, keep the forces back. But I think he, he has been back for a little while now. Yeah, you can see he has been getting involved uh, here and there. He has been returning, but it's it's over. It's over now. <laughs> yeah. So Kirandros, definitely a very nasty place to attack. Very, very good. I really like it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I can't remember what the problem was with our artillery. Um... Oh wait, no, we did bring Artie. Oh, we did bring Artie. Of course, we had the we had the um, the, the big old uh, Manganel, the Goblin War Engine. We did have Artie. I forgot. Yeah, uh, but the Goblin War Engine, as devastating as it can be, and we'll see that in uh, another uh, fight that I'm going to be recording. Um, it's uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to come out before or after this, but yeah, you can see the Goblin War Engine really can do a lot of damage to troops on the inside, but we really should have considered instead just bringing um, something that can bring down walls. I think that was that was our main like fault here, was just that um, we didn't have something that could break open a hole in the wall. Like this center line, imagine if we'd bust a hole open right here. You can see, well, you can see there's damage there. Uh, I think we tried, but the, the Goldman Warren just, just doesn't do that. So if we busted a hole open there, and then with a hole, you can move siege towers through. So then we could have moved a siege tower in here and there, and we really could have uh, could have punished them super duper hard. See, ten ten of course being our numbers, taking that beating for us, which is very, very you know of course very grateful for that. Uh, her and berserkers racking up a lot of kills. Um, you kind of saw a lot of the ammunition I was using by my berserkers was not on the best targets. Um, so a lot of those kills were just general hobbit folk, you know, which bit unnecessary but they did i mean they were fighting the the bloody trollmen they were fighting trollmen of harad for a long time as well so pretty pretty impressive i'd say i'm, I'm always happy with them enslavers caught in a naff position i probably shouldn't have thrown them in to the gateway maybe tried to use them a bit better but uh you know I, i'm a bit crazy with my elites i do tend to throw them into naff situations sometimes they come out well oftentimes they don't pikes I mean, on the attack, again, you, you always want to get your pikes with positive K KD, but it is what it is. Uh, I did, again, put them into NAF positions. Demons were going at them, especially this unit here. Demons were really going for that unit. Um, the swordsman, happy enough with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, generally pretty good. My triple clansmen doing their doing the best they could. Black wolves here, you can see both black wolves were basically used on the walls. That one with 45 kills, of course, being the first unit of black wolves going up against the skin changers. I was pretty happy with how that went. Uh, I think dealing with I mean dealing with trolls and crap on the walls is really like unless you have a troll yourself, um, it's not fun to deal with. Uh, or you can shoot them up. But as an attacker, that's not really an option for you. So uh, the Blackwolds, I think, went okay. I think it went about as good as it could have. Uh, Fraudrum Javs, again, you kind of saw I was a bit wild with my ammunition. Um, but, you know, is what it is. Troll Hunters, happy enough. Um, troll Shaw Axe Throwers. Again and again, I am shown that Troll Shaw Axe Throwers are very good, and yet I don't take them. <laughs> I'm just a bit silly. Um, Arenadine Rangers just doing their bit here and there. Uh, of course, this one, um, unfortunately, just getting absolutely blatted by the artillery at the end. Could have maybe done some more work. And most of the ammunition being spent on chariots and so on. Um, Rudar Marksman, again, 
blitzed by demons, quite surprised they get the kills they did, and Cold Fell Maidens being, you know, I mean, if I could go back, I probably would have brought two Cold Fell Maidens, you know, uh, to this fight. I think if I had two Cold Fell Maidens, I could have absolutely bullied that uh, that chariot right off the bat, could have charged him straight away, just been like, nah, you're done. Uh, what arguably we should have done is tweak an eye, um, should have rushed out to the west and dealt with that chariot straight away, you know, um, my call for maidens his knights and just just gotten it sorted ourselves just chasing him down to the corner of the map or whatever but uh, hey you know yeah yeah live and learn but um all in all very fun really really good time and uh just kind of let down by our lack of artillery i think that was that was the main issue for us um but cool thank you very much and i will uh, see you later